Hi everyone. In this short little video I want to talk about the long run aggregate supply curve. Now in the long run real GDP Y will equal potential GDP. Remember I'm going to abbreviate potential GDP with Y to stand for GDP but then I'll put in P in the superscript and let you know that it's potential. So it's a particular output, level of output. So this is the key point is that in the long run we think uh, GDP is going to be equal to potential and we'll talk later about reasons why GDP gets pushed to potential in the long run. Now this potential GDP is determined by the level of the capital stock, how many machines and tools are out there, the size of the labor force, so that's dependent upon the population, the decision to work or not, uh, so the decision about how many hours to work, whether to retire or go to school, those types of things, and the overall level of efficiency. So the level of technology, the quality of government institutions, and all those things that we talked about in the part of the course where we covered um, the economy in the long run, and that aggregate production function. So those are the factors that determine potential GDP. Now, to go ahead and derive the long run aggregate supply curve then, I'll keep this one relatively simple, we can just ask ourselves what's the relationship between the price level and GDP, which happens to equal potential, right? Well, at some initial price level, call it P1, we're at point A, and GDP equals potential. Okay. Now I just want to ask the hypothetical, what happens if the price level falls to P2? The price of everything falls in half. Price of goods and services, wages, all those things, everything just falls in half at exactly the same time. Okay? Well, changes in the price level in and of themselves don't cause new machines to exist or not. So the capital stock hasn't changed. In addition, uh, Changes in the price level in themselves don't cause people to exist or not, right? So if the prices of everything fall, including wages and that type of that type of thing, then real wages haven't changed, so the decision to work or not ha is not going to change. So L is going to be constant. In addition, see, the uh, changes in the average price level themselves aren't going to affect the level of technology, the quality of government institutions, and that type of thing. So all the things that are determinants of potential output will remain constant. Well, if all the determinants of potential output are constant, then it makes sense to say potential output hasn't changed, and therefore output still equals potential, so we're at point B. So for us, two points will determine a line. I'll go ahead and connect those two points, and that's my long-run aggregate supply curve. So the long-run aggregate supply curve we tend to think of as vertical at potential output. And as the name implies long run, this is going to be in the long run equilibrium, the economy is going to be somewhere on the long run aggregate supply curve, which means in the long run, output is going to be equal to potential. Okay. Now, for completeness sake, I want to talk briefly about things that are going to shift the long run aggregate supply curve. All right. So, what determines the long run aggregate supply curve? Well, it's these three things up here: the capital stock, the overall level of efficiency, and the labor force. So, let's assume, for the sake of arguments, we'll call this shifts. Let's say I pick a price level, call it P, pick some initial long run aggregate supply curve. Here's my potential output, it's my initial potential output. So the economy is initially at point A. And this is long run aggregate supply curve one. And let's say suddenly the level of technology improves dramatically. Well, if the overall level of technology improves, then that's going to drive up the efficiency of the economy. Well, if the economy is going to become more efficient, then that's going to mean you can produce more goods and services with the same amount of inputs, the same amount of capital, and the same amount of labor. Well, if that's the case, then potential output is increased. So now, the new price-output combination is point B. Well, point B is obviously not on the initial long-run aggregate supply curve, so there's some new run. Long run aggregate supply curve 2, running through point B, and the long run aggregate supply curve is shifted to the right. So that was, in effect, the effect of an overall increase in the level of efficiency. I would have gotten exactly the same result if instead the labor force had expanded, say people decided to work till they were 75, so you had more workers, or the capital stock increased, okay, for whatever reason. 
Likewise, so anything that increases capital, labor, or the overall level of efficiency shifts the long run aggregate supply curve to the left, I mean to the right. Anything which decreases any of those things, say there's a war, so there's a huge drop in the capital stock because it gets bombed out of existence. Oh, say this is, you know, 13, 1400 uh, Europe, the plague comes along, wipes out a third of the population, or there's a decline in the quality of government institutions for whatever reason, then the long-run aggregate supply curve, then potential output's going to decrease to potential output 3. That means the new price potential output combination is going to be point C, and therefore our long-run aggregate supply curve is going to be vertical at long-run aggregate supply curve 3. So if any of those things decrease the overall level of efficiency of the capital stock or the labor force, then the long-run aggregate supply curve is going to shift to the left. So really the story of the long-run aggregate supply curve is just a story of potential output. Anything which increases potential output shifts the long-run aggregate supply curve to the right. Anything which decreases potential output shifts the long-run aggregate supply curve to the left. I guess I should, for completeness, put that in there. Okay? And that about does it for the long-run aggregate supply curve for us.